and look, I'll leave that up to the owners and the league officials to decide how we do things. But those are the those are the rules. We know the rules before we engage uh, uh, in this league, and um, we try to succeed, even though uh, those those rules make it difficult to build a dynasty or build a roster over multiple years. Um, but John and his team have done an amazing job of the past two years to um, with really difficult conditions to, to be competitive and to build a winning team. Um, and we did the same thing in the offseason with less time. So um, I, I do think there's a documentary potential there to follow GMs around in the offseason. I think there's a lot, of, a lot of great stories and a lot of good work um, uh, to, to, uh, to document. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible how they work and what they have to deal with. So, um, you know, what happens moving forward is up to others. So um, coaches and everybody involved will, will make the best of how we do things currently. Given those rules, and maybe because of them, maybe in, in spite of them, whatever, I don't know that any team, at least in the last 20 years, has made three straight and lost in the finals. That's kind of what you guys have a chance of competition. Um, yeah, every team has that chance to begin the season. Um, and that's very difficult to do with 29, sorry, 28 other teams. Um, but the mentality we have at LAFC is to try to win every game we play in. And uh, we want to win as many games as possible this year. I'm hesitant to put, uh, to, put um, to formulate clear goals as far as MLS Cups, this, this, this. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. Throughout the course of a season, many things happen injuries, uh, roster changes. So um, I can tell you that here we try to win the next game. And um, that's our objective with Seattle. Hi, Steve. Martin Rogers with Fox. Nice to meet you. Um, you now have a goalkeeper who's maybe 15 months removed from playing in one of the greatest soccer matches of all time and comes with an absolute weight of experience at the very highest level. Apart from the obvious, what does he bring to this group when you have a, a young bunch of guys who can learn from someone like him? Uh, yeah, leadership and um, something that we've always tried to do is, is uh, onboard uh, leadership. And leadership is something um, very valuable in this sport and in many team sports uh, environments and, and Hugo is that. Um, it's easy to draw a comparison with players we've had in the past like a Giorgio, a Gareth, Carlos. Um, different in a sense to Giorgio, um, same on the field, their instruction, their input, their tips. Um, what they actually vocalize to players is super valuable and accurate, which is uh, a huge help for all of us, um, but more so for the younger players, um, and to be reorganized. And I've been uh, very impressed with Hugo. Um, um, I don't know why I'm impressed, because I knew that was there. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's a pleasure to see it in real time. Um, and off the field, different than Giorgio, I think, um, a silent leader off the field um, in his own right. And Giorgio is uh, is 24/7, uh, so differences. But we're all different people, and and I think uh, the team has accepted him uh, with open arms, and he as well. So it's been integrated pretty quickly. Is it part of the attraction? Obviously, it probably doesn't hurt being based in LA, right? When you're looking at, at players who want to have a different kind of experience at the end of their career and experience something new, maybe they've got a family. It, it probably doesn't hurt being where we are. I think you answered your question. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful pl it's a wonderful place to live. No, and yes, it's, of course, it's an attraction. And um, I tell every new player the same thing: um, you will enjoy playing here. And I can I can give that to every player. Um, they will enjoy their time here. But we ask of them: this is not a vacation. We will be competitive, and the level is high in training. And it's my job to keep it as high as possible. But players will enjoy the sport of football again here in LA past players and you included Carlos in that. So is Carlos the past of LAFC or is there a chance that he may come back? You, you know, I think he'll always be part of LAFC. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We're at, both of the parties are working towards a solution. So that's a great sign. And both parties want to, so uh, we'll leave it up to them. Um, Carlos and I have a wonderful relationship. The doors are always open for him. Um, but I stay out of the rest of the stuff. He's not been here, but his presence, it sounds like it's been here. He still has space in the locker room, players still talking to him. So what's it been like to prepare for a season without Carlos? And how have you seen other guys fill that void? I don't know about the locker room. I don't go in there. Um, so if you've been in there and I haven't, <laughs> then... I'm just trusting Aaron Long, so... Okay, you know. all right. It's a good source. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, look, he's been here for six years. He was our captain. Uh, of course, he's going to have a presence. And we don't erase people and people out of our memory here. Um, we love Carlos, and um, I hope he comes back. But it's up to him and the club. That's the player space, yeah. Okay. I hated it when coaches went in locker rooms when I was a player. Um, and so I'm returning the favor. Well, I guess I'm not returning the favor. <laughs> The group you have here, how do you feel about them? Where are some question marks for you still? Where do you feel like you guys have some strengths? I think our depth is is uh, you know our weakness. Uh, I feel really good about our our first group and uh, a couple behind that, and then and then we're pretty young, um, and so our depth is is um, part of the process in MLS and part of the challenge, um, and that will be a challenge this year to stay healthy. Our schedule until mid-May is is pretty favorable. We just Saturday Saturday. So that makes it possible, but nobody is uh, protected from injuries. Um, they happen in games. This is the sport, and we're asking players on a daily basis to push the limit. And uh, so injuries will happen, and then how we get out of those, and when they happen, and how many there are, kind of determines a little bit of, of your success um, if your rosters are thin. Coach Taylor Schaaf, Spectrum News. You mentioned the, the, the depth and the youth of this team. What do you want to see from some of these young guys? I want them. Um, to take the I've got nothing to lose brave attitude, which is something we always try to do with all our players. We want to be the aggressor at LAFC. We want to play full, uh, forward, um, score goals, and uh, be fearless. And that's what I, I expect from younger players. I expect younger players um, to train harder than the older players, more experienced players, I should say. They need to work on their deficiencies. They need to be like sponges and soak up everything at all moments. Um, to become better because they are behind experienced players and you need to do more to surpass those players. It's not going to happen automatic. Nothing happens automatically in this business. It's with hard work um, and a strong mentality goes a long way, but the work is irreplaceable. Also, Mar, is he able to play like this ready to play this weekend or is physically is he okay? And Tomas? Anomar? Angel? Um, uh -huh. Yeah, he had a, he had a long off season, longer than others, and hadn't had a competitive match for a while. So we're we're working on his fitness, but he's able to play. You talk about the depth, good thing you don't have 53 matches this year. Yeah, but look, going into last season, we weren't guaranteed that, yeah. and so that's something you work towards. Um, um, if you look at now, the Champions Cup, I believe it's called, some teams are done with after two matches. So. So, you know, speaking of that, I have to ask you. Uh, I, I can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go to Zoom. Go ahead, Scott French. Hey, Steve, i got two questions for you. Um, first off, with, with so many, uh, so much changeover, how has the acclimation process worked? How, uh, how integrated are the newcomers? And how do you feel about your depth? Hey, Scott. Um, yeah, I'm, I love the integration process here in LA. It's it's awesome. Our team is. Um, I've said it before. Uh, we have a rule in the way. Um, so, our team is 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 pretty amazing in onboarding new players and very open. Um, and uh, a lot of great leaders in that locker room and, and communicative people in general. And so that makes that process uh, very smooth and and positive. Um, yeah, the depth is, is what it is. I think it's a great opportunity for a couple of young, younger players to step up and, and to prove they're good enough. And it's what we're asking them to do. And I'm really looking forward to their answers. And lastly, uh, that, that you aren't in the Champions League, what ways has that changed your, your preparation and what ways has that been a plus? It does change the preseason a little bit. Um, last year, the message was to the players, we need to be a little more focused on, at times, conserving energy, meaning tactically understanding. You can't press for 90 minutes, so there will be some uh, moments in a deeper block. Um, but making good decisions, not getting caught in between, not getting caught in these crazy counterattack matches. Uh, and so being a little smarter and conservative tactically um, was the message last preseason. This year is a return to our model. So we're hoping to be quite aggressive and, uh, and to get after teams. Um, and that is the, the approach in preseason and um, doesn't erase the other side of it, but I think that is what we're allowed to do now, thinking Saturday, Saturday till mid-May.
next question Thank from you. Andy Diosa. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I was talking to Brian Spence another day and he was kind of asking about the LAFC Seattle rivalry. It was, seemed like it just blossomed from the beginning organically. I wanted to know what your thoughts were on that. Obviously, you guys get the better of them. In the postseason last year, he mentioned that he had been in Toronto his goal up on, uh, on his computer all through the holidays to remind himself and remind his team of the motivation. Just want to know your thoughts about the match going up. Yeah, I heard he showed that goal to his group on uh, day one of preseason. Um, so that should tell you a lot about the game. I think it's a super healthy rivalry. Um, obviously, nothing between Brian and I. I think he's a fantastic guy and coach. Um, his record speaks for himself. Um, but I enjoy all the time I have when I get to pick his brain. Um, and they're going to be a great team again this year. They're going to be uh, definitely up there with the top of the league. I believe and have a have a strong roster, a very balanced roster, loads of experience. They have continuity and predictability in their roster. Uh, predictability is a positive for me. Uh, having a great understanding between the players um, because they played together for a while and had the same coach. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a great team, a team who wants to send a message on match day one. Uh, they want to beat the team that beat them at home in the playoffs last year. So I understand their motivation. Um, my players will understand that as well, and uh, we'll have answers. Right, last question from Josue Lopez. Thank you so much. Hello, Steve Koch. Uh, good to see you, as always. You know, uh, Thomas Anke, Lomar Campos, uh, David Martinez, social players, how do you, as a dressing room or you as a coach, help them to adapt to social experience and, and successful team? And in the case of Omar, happened in your career in Germany. How was it like to come to a new country and adapt quickly as you did in Germany back in the day? Um, I'd like to think the integration with Omar is here a little easier than, than, than mine was in Germany. Um, at least there's the language barrier is not the same. Um, uh, we do most of a lot of our coaching in Spanish and we have uh, on the field is probably only Spanish. So I don't think there's a, an issue there. I think giving new players as much information as possible about what status quo is and what it was and, and what we're trying to be and how their own individual attributes are gonna help us is the key. And we've been doing that. It's with video work, it's communication, it's stopping training, it's asking players questions, letting them engage. And uh, Omar and the other players have, have experienced that already. And from I can tell they understand our model very well and um, are going to be great additions.